themselves or lack thereof, depending on the situation. So ultimately, I think it it boils down to a level of respect for the fact that this is another person with their thoughts, beliefs, actions, whatever. And so long as there's no overstepping on either side, mm -hmm. you know, then it can continue to be a prosperous relationship because you're able to see eye to eye on not necessarily everything, but enough. And I think that goes back to what you were saying. Like, there's so much more than the faith you practice to that, you know, there's so much more than the faith you practice that gives people common ground, mm -hmm. you know? Like, and I think this may be a consequence of just me having a lot of friends who either have some sort of church background or even if not a church background, know somebody who had a church background. Yeah. So it's like, it's easier to relate, obviously, to someone who's a Christian or at least knows the faith, but mm -hmm. it's not a necessity. Right. And I think that goes along with a lot of the things that we were talking about in our afterburn last week or whatever week that was and or our last episode, let's say that. Um, and how we were just talking about like our lifestyles, our behaviors, the way that we act, the way that we um, live this life, how um, Pastor Ryan even said, it's nice to be nice. Like we just have to be in a place where we can show who God is just on our daily walk. And it's not necessarily being like the holy roller, as a lot of people like to call us. We don't necessarily have to have our Bible on deck and pull out scriptures and be like, okay, the Lord says, you know, in, in, in this, this conversation. And don't get me wrong, conversations can go there, but I think that it could just be as simple as sharing our experiences, sharing our, um, sharing the things that we've been through, sharing our testimonies. Like that goes a lot further than sometimes pulling out a, a, a Bible verse, you know? And I was actually having a conversation with my mom about this a little bit. And, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, the fact that some this, this is why it's so important, especially with navigating these friendships of people who are not, Christians because you don't know what their background is. You don't know what they've been through. There's a lot of people, you know, they know about God, but they've been through so much that now they have church hurt, you know? Mm -hmm. And for them, you know, even though we we can, we want to be able to reach them where they are and be able to talk to them about God, sometimes pulling, pulling a Bible scripture out can be more of a detriment to them mm -hmm. than anything. And I think that's where, you know, being led by the spirit will take you and say, you know what, because of where this person is, maybe it's not a good idea for me to pull out this Bible verse because they may come from a background where someone used the Bible in the wrong way and used it as a form of abuse and not mm. used it the way that God wanted them to use it. You know, they might benefit more from just a regular conversation and you incorporate God into that conversation, you know, so just people have to be careful with not causing more harm to the person than good. And, you know, you know, and that's, that's where that also that, uh, that phrase or that scripture comes from, you know, having zeal without knowledge, you have so much, um, you know, built up that you're like, I, you know, I want to share the God with everybody and I'm so excited and everybody needs to know about God. And you start going about doing all these things. And God is like, calm down <laughs> you know what i mean like stop what you're doing and and you know go let me lead you to who you need to talk to let me lead you to who needs to hear this this word or these messages and that kind of thing you know right like brother hammond's testimony was really powerful i think and because he was talking because he was talking about meeting or reaching his cousin who just asked him 
about his faith because of the life that he was living. And his cousin's on the road. Like, whatever he did to get there, at the end of the day, it was like, you know, he was living a life that that showed him, hey, maybe th there's something different here. I need to get some of that. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way Jesus did that, too. Like, Jesus just came and talked to people. He met them where they were. And I think a lot of times, a lot of times people in the faith forget that that's what we're supposed to do is meet people right. where they are rather than. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Christian Call Center where Jesus is on the main line and we're online, too. <laughs> What's up, y'all? How y'all feeling? We're good. We're good. We're good. How we're are back. You? I'm good, y'all. We back for another episode. You know, episode hey, four. Hey, hey. Yes, sir. So, y'all. So, what we talking about today, y'all? Let me um, know something. This is adulting part two, kind of. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's adulting part two. How do you stay saved? Mm. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question. Because, you know, a lot of people like the once, once save, what's that phrase? One time, one time save, save, time save. Right. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that doesn't really work. Because there are things happening around us all the time, every day. Things are knocking us left and right, like Will Smith did to Chris Rock. <laughs> and we're just supposed to turn the other cheek. Uh, I don't know if I would have turned the other cheek like Chris Rock did, though. But we ain't gonna <laughs> talk about that tonight. True. So, what are we talking about? How do we stay safe? How do we navigate all of these things that we face on a regular basis? Like, just for example, you know, we all work. And yeah. we don't always like our coworkers. We Jesus. don't always like our bosses. We don't always, you know, we we just go through some things. And just how how do we navigate that as a Christian? Like, how do we stay level headed? How do we stay in a in the right mind? Like, what's what's some skills that you guys have? For one, we most definitely have to stay prayed up. Because mm. mm -hmm. I get tested every day. How so? Give us a story. <laughs> I don't want to get nobody in trouble. Don't but, use um, names. Yeah, you got to use names. It's this one particular co worker at my job. Mm -hmm. She just does too much. That's entirely too much. And I'll be wanting to be like, it don't take all that. Calm down. Yeah. But like she be jumping on that last good nerve that I got. <laughs> so in order for me to just not say nothing out the way or get myself in trouble or either get myself fired, I got to pray before I go on the job. I got to yeah. pray while I'm at work. And I definitely have to pray to thank God for getting me through this work day and not psyching nobody out. That's how they so, call that's that holy ghost hesitation right there. <laughs> um, I ain't gonna hold you. I think I think I can speak for all of us to say that I think everybody has at least one coworker like that. That it's just like God said love everybody, but ooh, you push that real hard. You know, you know what? What what I will thank God and I don't want to drink, but I will thank the Lord Jesus Christ that I do not have that problem at my new job. Thank you, Jesus. My old job, ooh, that'll take me several hours to get and pack all of that. But my current job, I'm glad. I'm glad that I am saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized. Oh, so none of your clients make you not want to just we talking about <laughs> workers. We're talking about co-workers. We're not talking about, I can't touch my clients. Can't touch my clients. Lord, That's help. true. But some of them parents at my job are making me want to 
tap dance on their head too, though. Ah, tap dance on their head. What, we trying to help your child. What is you so rude for? Yeah. And that's the thing, like how, and, and okay, going back to, that's again, going back to Pastor Ryan saying, it's nice to be nice. How long does it take you <laughs> to get from, I want to tap dance on your head to, <laughs> let me just calm down and be nice. Again, like I said, you got to stay prayed up. Yeah. Lord, control this tongue. Because mm -hmm. if I say something out the way, it ain't going to be good. Right. Yeah. And that's real. That's real because, you know, and we fall again. They always say like we're in the presence of sin. So there's, like I said, all these things around us that try to like steer us away from from God. And it's just everyday things. And it could be so simple. Something mm -hmm. triggers you. It could be somebody cutting you off on while you're driving in row and next thing you know you just forget the fact that you a whole christian and you just start going off and like my mom always tell me they can't hear you <laughs> it's like that's not the point i don't care if they can't they hear can't you. hear me but they can see me <laughs> they don't even have to see me i just need to get this out <laughs> like, <and> then, <laughs> what's, what's the point how is how is that helping you know what i mean because i'm it's sitting fine. here yelling in my car and they going down the road about their business we ain't even gonna get on the topic of road rage because i got bad road rage jesus so yeah. does joe i had road rage before i was even driving so right like joe was <laughs> the biggest road rager as a passenger i have yep. ever seen in my life <laughs> right and it's just gotten 10 times worse since she got a license bro like I'm not a Y'all put my life in danger cutting me off like that. Yeah. But again, that goes back back to see, maybe if I prayed before I left the house, I wouldn't have reacted like that. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That might have helped me a little bit. Cause then I would be in a calm, better mood. And honestly, you know what? That is not that is that is very I I, I hit a nail on the head there because for real. I had noticed a difference. Like if I'm in my car jamming out to my Christian music, I ain't worried about nobody. Like I'm just in here having a whole worship set in my car. So I'm just driving to, you know, my client's house or whatever. And I'm chilling. The moment I'm like listening to God knows what, they say, you know, I'm mad at everybody in the world. <laughs> so I need to keep keep my Christian music on. And I'm that like, goes that goes back. Actually, that goes back to if if y'all were if any of y'all were on our our, our Instagram, which y'all should be. Right? That was one of my questions. Listening to music that ain't gospel. Because mm -hmm. I know obviously we like to listen to it because mm -hmm. it's out there. Yeah. We grew up with it. But sometimes it ain't what we should be listening to because it puts us in a mood we shouldn't be in. That's true. And like I said, I think I said this the other day. It's like if something now, now I just realized that it clicked in my head. But if something is personally affecting you, because it may affect it may affect me differently than it would affect somebody else. So maybe it will it will affect me while I'm in the car, but it might not affect me, you know, somewhere else. You know what I mean? So. You, we just have to be mindful and be very observant of how we're experiencing things, how we're living this life for God. Because, you know, these these biblical principles are in place for a reason. It's because people have experienced these things in the past and they learn from those experiences. And that's why they're able to, you know, share these principles through the Bible. So it's the same thing. Like, we just have to when we're experiencing things we just have to stop think pay attention like uh look at it from the other side and be like okay why did i react this way why did i handle the situation this way did i make the right choice did i did i let my flesh win or did i let my spirit win and i think that's what we have to think about when we when we do certain things and when we react a certain way a lot of times we allow our flesh to take over and we don't let our spirit we don't allow ourselves to be led by the spirit ouch that's when we mess up <laughs> you said ouch. Let you say ouch <laughs> i mean again we're all works in progress like we're not 
there yet. We are striving. We, short daily. we do. But at, again, at the end of the day, like we, it's just all about making a conscious decision of, I want to be better today than I was yesterday. And whatever it is that I didn't do yesterday that was wrong, or whatever it is that I did do yesterday that was wrong, this day is an opportunity to make it right. I was actually just talking about that with a coworker uh, mm-hmm. Saturday, who we because we were talking about you know, funny enough, we were talking about music that you know speaks to us, specifically gospel music that speaks to us. Mm-hmm. And I was and I was talking about the uh, Jonathan McReynolds song "Keep On Doing Better." Oh my God, I love that man so much. And it's like that song, <laughs> <laughs> that song, like it's like literally, there's so much in this world that can cause us to slip and fall, mm-hmm. but because we're alive, we have the opportunity to get up and keep on doing better. Let Every me take a moment to just appreciate the gift that is Jonathan McReynolds, okay? Oh my god, but honestly, it- no, like, I for real, if I y'all had not tagging him in our comments, because if y'all, was- I have because I talked about him on Instagram live. But if y'all have not listened to this man's music, y'all are missing out for real. I'm telling you, when I tell you that man has a gift, like, when they talk about minister of music. That man is a true minister of music. Like, if you just listen to the words of his songs, like, it'll get you out of any situation. If you pay attention, he speaks about daily issues that young adults go through. Yes, he is. When I tell you, he speaks to our generation. He's around our age. He has to be. He speaks to our generation. I'm thinking he's 28, 29. Maybe maybe younger than that. I'm not sure. But he really, like, he has to be. He's 32 years old. Oh, he's right older. I didn't the, know he was that right old. The millennial, he's a millennial. And I'm telling you, like he speaks directly to what? our generation. Like even that song about adulting, like listening to the words of that song, it just made you like, like think, like man, somebody understands what I'm going through. Someone is speaking to my story right now, and mm-hmm. and giving me the words. Like I can name. Oh, so many of his songs that I can go through that it's like, you know what? That's true. That's true. That's true. You understand? Like, you know what? He just, anyway. No. Right, well, before this make turns a, into uh, a John McReynolds playlist for young huh? adults. How about that? Make a playlist for the young adults. How about that? Who, me? Yeah, it's what I'm saying. Like, make a Jonathan McReynolds playlist for, for the young adults. I, do I go on Spotify and I go to his, his Spotify page and I just hit shuffle and all the songs, listen to it all day. That's what Y'all I hear that, people. So if you're going through, go to Spotify and, and look up Jonathan McReynolds. If you're yes. going through, he'll get you through a rough day, I swear. Let me know what your favorite song is. You ain't I gonna have have to to that's, that's mine. That's my, my song, too. My God, that song right there, that convicted my spirit. Yes. That really people. people did, too. People. That's true. Mm-hmm. And speaking of people, that's what we were just talking about. That song right there, because it's like, the the phrase they are the best and the worst you have yes. created that right there yes <laughs> just speaks to everybody it's just like the, these are supposed to be made in your image so you expect people to have the image of god and portray god and then you run into these people that are not portraying you know christian they are not portraying the image of god and then you're like now you gotta think about yourself. Now um, I portraying the image of God, and if I'm not, how can I portray the image of God? Because mm-hmm. that can turn somebody in a different direction. You know, that's the one right there. It's nice to be nice. That's our catchphrase for the day. Thank you, Pastor Ryan, for that one. It is nice to be nice. Is that right? Yeah. There? Message. That will, help <laughs> that will help me on a daily basis. I'm gonna keep thinking to myself. It is nice to be nice. So rather than responding. And yelling at people in my car. Mm. <laughs> I you it's nice to be nice. I felt that. Yep. But not nah, for it, it. It comes back to fact the fact that I guess our life is our ministry. You know. Yes. Our life is our individual ministry to people. If we portray certain things to people, that's how people know who God is because. They're not coming to church. 
Yeah. People aren't going to church the way they used to, and they don't want to, a lot of people. They don't want to because of things they've experienced or because of, you know, whatever reasons people have. A lot of them, I, I would honestly say people have valid reasons not to want to attend congregations because things have... Facts. Say that. Differentiate that. Congregations, not church, but congregations. There's a difference right like there. Congregations have messed people up. And yeah. Facts. it's understandable. So our responsibility is to be better mm -hmm. so that even, even, even if someone never steps foot in a congregation again, at least they can receive Christ. Yes, that's powerful. They should still see the God in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whether you're in church or outside of church. Exactly. Your life is always an example of what Christianity is supposed to be, what it's supposed to look like, despite people's experiences and what they've been through. They need to be able to see the real thing. They need to be able to see like, yes, I was hurt by this congregation, but that's not what I see in you. There's something different right there. And that's what I need. Whatever you got going on, whatever God you serve, I want it. that's the God that I need because that's real and that's true. And I was reading a post um, on Instagram, I'm gonna see if I can pull it up, but it was talking about, um, you know, like what, uh, the youth is looking for in, um, in churches and Christianity. And one of the things that they said was just honesty. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, people are, people forget where they come from. Ooh. People forget their experiences. People forget that they were once not perfect. You know, whether you grew up in the church or not, I grew up in the church, but that does not mean that I was saved, sanctified, holy, ghost filled, water mm -hmm. baptized my whole life. You know, I've done some things, I've been involved in things that I wouldn't have expected myself to be in, but that doesn't mean that I'm not. That doesn't that doesn't take away anything from my relationship with God. It allowed me to make my relationship with God better, actually, because of the things that I've been through, because it taught me who God is in my life, how I can lean on God it, it, all all of these practical things because of the things that I've experienced, experienced in my life. But again, I'm not forgetting who I am. You know what I mean? I'm not forgetting who God made me to be. Mm -hmm. My testimony means something because you never know who is coming in those doors of the church. And sometimes your story, what you experience, your life prior to you, you know, getting better in God can push somebody to say, you know what, because you went through this, I can do it too. Because you, you are, are willing to even share your story means a lot to people because sometimes people are going through things and they're so afraid to say something. Because the the judgment, the ridicule, mm -hmm. the, the things that you're going the backlash that you're going to get, mm -hmm. so then that puts people in isolation, that puts people in their shells, that puts people in a box. And it's just like, you know what? I can't say this thing because everybody's going to hound on me. Everybody's going to tell me I'm this and I'm that. They're going to call me these names. They're going to they're gonna shun me. They're going to look at me weird. They're going to roll their eyes at me when they, they see me walking through the, the door. But... At the end of the day, again, like I said, you never know what your experience can do for somebody else. And if you keep it to yourself, that's one thing I always learned. What you fail to do is hindering somebody else from coming to God. Yeah. And sometimes just me sharing, hey, I went through X, Y, Z can cause somebody to say, okay, I see you, you've been through what I've been through, but you don't look like what you've been through. So that's motivation right there for me to work on whatever I got going on for me to get to, to uh, where I need to be. And that's kind of convicting, what you just said, that's kind of convicting me because I've said on, I've been sitting on my testimony, multiple testimonies for so long because of, I was scared of the judgment you yeah. know, I, I'm going to receive backlash. I'm already knowing. Yeah. <laughs> Once I started telling my testimony, I'm going to receive backlash. Mm -hmm. And like, I, at this point, 
I don't care no more. Yeah. Because if I sit on my testimony, I can't help the next person. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this, because I've I've been through situations where I was like, I don't know if I want to go back to church. (coughs) The one thing, the one thing that I had to tell myself repeatedly was your relationship with God is personal. It is not about anybody else but you mm-hmm. and God. And you can't let people keep you away from your relationship with God. Because the same way you're working on it, they're working on it too. Right. So if I allow somebody else to pull me away from God, that that right there, like I just yeah. And to tack on to what you said, Joe. The Bible says, let nothing separate you from the love of God. Mm -hmm. And I always like to tack on to that. Not even you. Yeah. Don't even let you separate yourself from God's love. Because God loves you enough that he don't care what you did. He don't care what somebody else did. He loved you for you because he made you. He gave you another day to start to continue and live this life because there's somebody else that needs what you have to offer. Mm-hmm. Like, like you never know somebody might be going through the same thing that you're going through or what you've been through. And if like you can't help them because you're not I lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. How are you supposed to help that person if you're not telling your story? Yeah. That is that is very true. And that brings us to, like you said, like let nothing separate you from the love of God, just being grounded in him and not allowing things that are going on in the world to sway you away, you know, because we're met on a daily basis of people, you know, sh- being shunning, shying away from Christianity, walking away from the church because of their experiences. And there are people who are posting and saying all these things about God and, and their own version and interpretation of God. You, you see these things on a daily basis. And sometimes it's like, is it worth a response? Is it not worth a response? Like, how do you just not want to be like, how can you not see this? Like, how, how can you not see the reality? Like, how could you not, you know what I mean? Like, what, 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 you, what you looking at, you know? Um, I had I had a thought and I lost it because I was listening to what you were saying. I'm sorry. It's okay. Like, it's not, it's not your fault. Like, it was just, it was here and then I'm going to get it back. Just, yeah. Um. Oh, I was saying that, like, we say all this to say that part of staying saved is acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. It's acknowledgement of the entirety of life, mm-hmm. I think, is important. Like, it's not just it's not just the ups and it's not just the downs. Yeah. Hills and the valleys, you know, like you can't have life without the good times and the bad times because otherwise it's just it's a lie yeah so I think, that, I'm, go ahead i'm gonna let you finish all right Kanye. um <laughs> it's like what was i saying oh man i had i'm so sorry it's okay it's okay i'm gonna I'm 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 get it back um it's like we we people want to know that there is like you're not just lying like because a lot of people it's like it's like okay when you come to god everything's supposed to be great everything's supposed Mm -hmm. to be crazy supposed to be fine and dandy ain't nothing supposed to go wrong and we all know that's crap because we all go through things Mm -hmm. like being a christian doesn't stop life from happening to you yeah means you have more options when life happens to you yeah, wait a second. That's good. That's good. You know, That's good right there. I like that. You got more options. Because a lot of people 
Yes. Keep keep talking. Keep like, cause cause we have because <laughs> not only not only and that's and that's what I was gonna say. That's what's gonna bring me back to the congregation part of it. Mm -hmm. Because the congregation is not to the congregation is not there to prove your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. The congregation is there to have options for when you're going through stuff. We're supposed to be strengthened by each other's testimony. Come so on, Minister McKenzie. Come on. The congregation. Where is Amberina? Share those testimonies. Where's and the collection plate? Gain strength from that. I need Tay to, to, to play a little, you know, get on that <laughs> order real quick. Dun, 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 dun. Da, da, da. <laughs> Play a little shout track real quick. Let me run around this room. Come on, Minister McKenzie. <laughs> Catherine, you hear that? You let the other five minutes, uh, five minutes of, of fire. Oh man, but um, but yeah, it's like we 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 forget that 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 that's that's what we're here for. Yeah. We're here to strengthen each other. Like I think we talked about it last episode. Iron sharpened yeah. iron, you know. Yes. And that's part of the sharpening is that I'm here because I went through this. And because I went through this, I could talk to you who might be going through this. And you might be going through something else who could talk to that person. Preach, sir. We could all build each other yes. up in this most holy faith rather than tear each other down because of stuff. All of us have done something wrong. Like, yeah, nobody who hasn't done something wrong. And if you say you haven't done something wrong, you're lying. Yes. You need to go to the altar right now and repent because you're lying. So Preach, sir. That's we have to stop bringing judgment and condemnation on people because the, the Bible itself says Woo! there's now no condemnation. To them that are in Christ Jesus. Oh, yes, right? Lord. It says, we read it. Mm. The doors of the church are now open. Felt that. Felt that. That's that's when you get up and start preach, Pastor. Preach. That's that right there. Take your time. Mm. Um, but that's 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 my two cents. Um. So acknowledging acknowledging every aspect of life is part of staying saved. Mm -hmm. being, able to being able to recognize that there are, there are times when you're not going to be at your best. Come on now. Come on now. You know, like, I'm, that I I'm, wrote. I'm not always going to be up here. I'm not, yeah. I'm not always going to be okay. And that's okay. There's something that I wrote. We were having a, um, a sisterhood event we were celebrating two of the sisters in the church birthday and we were making these things called self-care jars and basically it was just like writing down you know little words or messages or like you know things that you can do to uh encourage yourself on moments you know days like when you're not feeling too good or whatever or even days where you are feeling good just like something to encourage you but one thing that i wrote down in it was there are mountains and there are valleys and you have to celebrate whichever one you're in, which means that regardless of what your situation may look like, even when you're at your lowest, you still should be praising God just as much or more as when you're in your highest time. Because one, that's what's going to get you through. And two, again, everything that God takes us to through is preparing us for something greater. Mm -hmm. The moment of weakness that I'm in right now it's not just building me up. It's going to help somebody else. It's going to help my friend. It's going to help my mother. It's going to help my sister. It's going to help my some random person on the street because of whatever it is that God is taking me through. So you can't constantly beat yourself up. You can't constantly like look down on yourself. You can't, you know, put yourself into, into a depression because you have to fight Every day, every day you have to fight to maintain this walk with God, regardless oh, of, fight. <laughs> regardless of, you know, whatever it is that you see, because one thing I learned, what you see is not what God sees. Mm -hmm. I may, you may see 
somebody who's weak, somebody who's disheveled. And God sees a warrior. God sees a leader. God sees a, a whatever it is. God sees something completely different because he knows our beginning. He knows our middle. He knows our end. So we may be looking at this thing and saying, you know what, God, I'm not going to make it. And God is saying, yes, you are. Yes, you are. And not only are you going to make it, but you are going to be 10 times better than where you were when you started. Man. There's another five minute of fire. <laughs> five minutes of fire. Good. Then we did ours. You, your, your next, Brandy. Come on now. That's, that's <laughs> how my calling. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what your calling you is. You say that now. You say that that's now. Not hey, my call. You don't know. Yeah, the Lord didn't have that conversation. That's not my calling. <laughs> it's okay. God ain't, I don't remember God saying that on me, but things happen and things develop. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Because that definitely was not there years ago. Man, Even what? talking about God was hard for me. And that's another thing I want to talk about, especially like being in. Um, I think we talked about this a little bit before. Like we grew up in a church where our generation was kind of missed. We mm-hmm. were like the only people our age in the church. So all of my friends were non-Christians or Christians, but they weren't the holy rollers. I don't I don't know how to, how they to go to church every Sunday like we they, did. Right. They, they were saved, saved. Yeah, they weren't past the kids. They weren't doing all this stuff. So it just it was hard to navigate that because you know, you looking at your friends and they're going out here, there, whatever. They're attending these events and going out with friends and all that. And I'm not able to do that. And I you know couldn't necessarily understand why fully at the time. But I feel like it would have if I had people, you know, who who were also in my church, who were also Christian, who were also growing up the way that I was growing up. I would have had somebody to relate to. I would have had somebody to talk to. I would have been had somebody to um, that's going through this with me. And, you know, the iron sharpened iron as as you're learning and you're growing and you're going through this. Um you i'm also helping you to get through this as well because you know a lot of the older um crew in the church you know they would talk to us and be like you know like we understand where you're going through but i'm like nah because y'all weren't in the church at this time at this age you know what i mean so the things that you tell me like yeah i understand you experience them and i'm not saying i have to have all of those experiences but it's just like i just didn't know how to like, yeah, I want to go out with my friends, but unfortunately the friends that I have are not in church. Like, mm-hmm. and I, how am I supposed to make friends with other church people? Because we don't like, what other church friends our age were out there? We didn't have that. So it's like, how could, it was hard to even find, you know, people who were believing and t- being taught the same things that I, I was taught. And even when I did find them, they were, they either didn't last long or we moved or I don't even know, but they just, it just didn't go anywhere. Which brings us back to, which brings us back to another importance of congregation. Yeah. Just being around people who, who are like-minded to you, Mm -hmm. you know, because, Mm -hmm. because living a life of Christ in isolation is impossible. Yeah. You can't live a Christ life in isolation. Absolutely. I'm going to say it again. You can't live a life of Christ in isolation. (laughs) Absolutely. All y'all who trying to do it on your own, stop trying to do it on your own. Because it ain't going to work. Correct. You're going to fall on your face, and you ain't going to have nobody to help you up. Correct. Facts. Truth. All of that. I feel like if you have like-minded folks around you, Things that you're going through, it would, it would, it was, I'm not gonna say it's not gonna hurt, but it'll hurt a lot less because you have yeah. people who are going through similar things as you, and it can help you through these situations. They are your support system, your accountability partner, all of that. And if it we doesn't all, hurt less, it'll heal faster. Yes. We all have the same goal, and that is to get to heaven. And we all need to be pushing each other to get closer and closer. Do that, and if you have people who are holding you back, cut them out your life. That is normal. That is a part of growing up. It is okay to lose friends. It is okay to lose family members. It is okay 
to to lose people that you cared about relationships husbands wives girlfriends boyfriends all of that it is okay to lose those people because sometimes we put ourselves in situations that we don't need to be in people we, are seasonal yeah, yes we associate with people that we don't need to associate with and a lot of times it's because we step out of our godly mind and step into our fleshly mind and we want to fulfill whatever the flesh wants wants and we forget about God. And then when things go to the left, we're like, ooh, God. Give me out this situation. Yeah, yeah you, you, you remember me? Like, <laughs> putting ourselves in situations. Because I think it's important to recognize that even when we put ourselves in situations, it's not to say that God ain't there either. That's facts. No. That's facts. Because I think... I think people will take, oh, well, there's stuff God put you through and there's stuff you put you through. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be like, well, the stuff you put you through, God don't have to help you. You're right. He don't have to help you, but he will, though. But God is still looking at you like, look, 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 look at this. Look at this. Look, somebody come look at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's how God is looking at you right there. Like, you see this? What? <laughs> like, I got you, but why you have right. to do that? <laughs> right. I got exactly. to clean up the mess you made. Right. Exactly. Right. It's like a, a parent to a child, you know what I mean? Like I told you not to do it, you did it anyway, so now I got to fix your miss. Yeah, I'm still your parent at the end of the day, but I'm still gonna tell you, you fool. How dare you? <laughs> you done goof. Right. But I got you. It's like how their parents have parents always say, um, you know, when they about to whoop you and be like, I don't want to do this, but I'm doing this because I love you. That's not how I feel right now. <laughs> but I, I just know it. God been looking at me shaking his head. <laughs> exactly. God be like, you know what? Right. Just come get your whooping real quick. Just, just, just give me five look, minutes. Look at this child of mine. Look yeah. at this. Let me whoop you, and then it's, it's gonna be over. It's okay. We gonna be back watching movies and chilling in the next. God whoop is hurt though. Hey, look. It, it a home you know real quick. Hurts? You know what also hurts? The fact that we chose to do this thing. Right. That hurts God. But the, the good thing That's about. The good thing about the godly whipping, though, is you know where it's coming from. Because like you said, it humbles you real fast. That's yeah. like godly whipping. Because if it was just life whooping you, it would just be like, well, all right. You'd just be stuck there. You know? <laughs> right. You wouldn't learn your lesson. Because you know what we always say? Like, we get the whooping fine. But you know what hurts the most? When our parents say, I'm disappointed in you. Ooh. That hurts more Ooh. than the and that's the same thing with God. Sometimes he doesn't like whoop us, but he'll say, I'm disappointed in you. And we sit in the altar. Oh my God. Well, Not even it. all that. <laughs> Nobody knows. Got tissue flying everywhere. Going back and forth. Oh God, help me. Oh, fix God. me. Cleanse me of my wicked ways. All that. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you not oh, crying and tears flowing down yeah. your face. Oh, because God said I'm disappointed in you. Beating the floor at the altar because you're getting your butt whooped in, in the spirit. Man, that never hurts. I'm telling you, but it makes us better. It's it's cleansing. It's purging. Like like they say, God is the potter and we are the clay. So all those whoopings is taking all of the make things me out. And make me. Yes, it's pulling all the, the, the parts of the clay that does not need to be here to become this beautiful statue. This beautiful work of art that God Lord, made. I gotta get beat up to, to become this perfect statue that you're trying to mold me into. Because he gotta remove some things. He gotta chisel some things off. Some things, you know, are harder to chisel off than others. Some of the clay hardened. Say that. Say that. And instead of pulling it off like soft clay, he gotta chisel it off. That's why that hurts so much. Mm. Because we allowed it to harden. The, the analogies. <laughs> <laughs> the analogies. <laughs> oh my God. That was good. That was good. That was really good. Um do we wanna do we wanna do we wanna talk about our personal Stories like is the, is that is that something we want to talk about? Do we want to share that with the class? Oh, yeah. Or should we save that one? Um, up to y'all. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. What do you mean by our personal stories? Like, because we talking about how to stay saved. Yeah. So I mean, 
that's assuming one that everybody listening is saved because some people listening might not be where we are might not be in the in the walk yet they might be like do i need to start stepping this direction mm-hmm. so i mean we could save it for another time i just i just think it's something we should talk about at some point like how to get to the point because for us we grew up in this i think yeah so it's a different kind of it's a different kind of come to God moment, I think, yeah. for people like us. That all the PKs out there, we get it. We get it. PKs and kids, just kids in general who grew up in church, you know, it's a different kind of come to God moment than somebody who wasn't in it to start with and just came and, and was found by God, you know? You know what? I think I think we should save that for our Easter episode. Okay. I think that'll be a good thing to talk about for our Easter episode, which will be coming out soon. That's our next episode, y'all. So okay. if you want to hear our personal stories, give us a couple weeks and you'll hear it on episode five. Be back for Easter. Yes. And go to church for Easter too. Everybody and their mama finna be in church and we know it. So And we got two services. We'll Eight see y'all at the Easter egg hunt and a service. Eight and ten o'clock. Be there, or you won't be missing out. But okay. Um. So, in conclusion, life is hard. Very. But God makes it easy. Because a lot of people have the. Well, I would say. I would say God softens the blow. He don't make it easy, but he yeah. softens the blow. Yeah, because a lot of people have this viewpoint of Christianity is hard and you go through so much and this, that, and the third. And when it all comes down to it, like, it's really not. We just make it hard sometimes. And life is going to be hard whether you're a Christian or not. Yeah. Yeah. Christianity just gives you more options. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the thing. Like it take it takes people. There are stages to this because, like, I'm saying this now, but five years ago I couldn't say this. Three years ago I couldn't say this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's it's because of the things that I've been through and the experiences that I've had that allows me to be in a place where I can say things like that. And that's okay, regardless of where you are in your journey. It's a journey, and it's your own personal path. It's your own you know, personal walk with God. Nobody else can dictate that but you. You have to know where you are and you have to know where you want to be. That's why they always say not to compare yourself to other people. God is your measuring mark, all of those things, because you never want, you know, other people to hinder you from being where you're supposed to be. God knows your heart. That doesn't mean to be lazy just because God knows your heart, but that means that at the end of the day, everything is between you and God. Everything you do is between you and God. Nobody knows what you're doing at home. If you're praying 15 times a day or you pray one time a day, no one knows except you and God. But you have to be able to know if you need to do more or you're doing enough or you're you're not you're doing less than the norm or whatever the case may be you know exactly where you are on this journey they said the race is not for the swift nor the battle for the strong but those who endure to the end which means you have to have patience with yourself mm. be patient with yourself give mm. yourself grace allow yourself Ooh. to be okay with your mess ups knowing that god is there to put the band-aids on, knowing that God is there to patch you back up. That's not saying go out and be presumptuous <laughs> when I'm just saying that God knows where you are and he is always there to meet you where you are. God loves us with all his heart. In the words of Bob and Larry, you are God made you special and he loves you very much. Absolutely. God. Don't, don't 
We're not doing these references tonight. Don't hate on Veggie Tales. Nobody hating. I just don't like it. We got a hater in the house. <sighs> I'm like, uh, I'm next, my body. No, next episode, I'm playing Silly Songs with Larry. Keep playing with me. I'm going to disappear. <laughs> you, you done well, got her started, Brandy. You done got her started. Whatever. But no, y'all, we got we 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 really appreciate. We always appreciate y'all listening, because y'all didn't have to tune in. You know, y'all don't have to listen to three random people talk about God, but y'all are here, and we really appreciate that y'all listen to us. Y'all don't have to, but y'all have to. <laughs> right. <laughs> Keep listening. But y'all don't have excuse because we on every platform. Every platform. And if you don't know what platform we own, go ahead and check out that link tree. It's in our bio. Yeah. We hear y'all. But I think it's time. I know it now. I let him play. I can only mean one thing. Oh, 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 oh. It's my favorite part of the show. All right, y'all. Number one, two, three. Pick so- one. Three. One. The number is two. I knew it was going to pick me. <laughs> All right, Joe. There ain't a question uh-huh. for us or a statement. Tell me about the time your faith was tested. Ooh. Ooh. My faith was tested. Oh, man. Dang. Because that's my coming to Jesus story. Well, give a little sample. You got to tell the whole story. Oh, man. Okay. I will say, you know what? I'm going to say that. I'm going to talk about right now. And I don't, I don't want to say like my, uh, okay, look. So, yeah, you know what? I'll, 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 I'll share this one. So, um, I was working at a group home. Um, that was my first job that I had when I came here. And for some reason that job has shut down um, and ended up closing because there was no need for it. And I ended up coming to this new job where I was working at a daycare. And it was definitely a blessing because I was unemployed for five months. So from January of 2020 to May of 2020, I wasn't working at all. Um, the pandemic had hit around this time. So it was just, you know, a lot of things were happening. But long story short, I ended up at this job and I definitely feel like it was a blessing for me because obviously I needed a job. It was in something that I love to do, all these things. It was going to help me be able to continue school, all of that. And at, at some point, this job, I felt, started becoming more of a detriment than a blessing. Um. And let me let me rephrase that. It, it was always a blessing, but it started to be be in a place. It started to do. Mm, it started to make me um, kind of lose sight of myself and kind of get in the way of where my life was when I first moved here. Oh God, you are so good. It kind of got in the in 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 the place of where my life was, and now that I said that out loud, it made me think of so many times I was praying. And I know they always say like, um, when people speak to you, they don't always remember what they tell you. Mm. Oh, I don't want to get emotional. My God, but it's all right. It's all right. Who? But I remember. Um, Pastor Francois was praying with me on multiple occasions and he kept saying remember who you were before you came here before I even moved to Louisiana the life that I was living the way that I was so on fire for God all of those things that I, I developed before I moved here 
he kept telling me that and I could never understand why until this exact moment is because I allowed that job to kind of like steer me away. I was so dedicated to that work because I, I love that job. I absolutely love that job. I love working with kids. And it, everything from that moment started to go downward. I stopped going to school. Even though the whole reason why I came here was specifically for school. I had stopped going to law school because it became too much because I was giving so much time to my job even though I was still attending classes, but I didn't have time to focus on anything. Like all these things were happening. Like I felt like I was giving more and more time to the job and less and less time to God. I wasn't praying as much as I used to be. I wasn't reading my Bible as much as I used to be. All the things kind of got in the way and I wasn't understanding what was happening. But I know, long story short, I ended up leaving the job and, um, I ended up leaving the job and I got a new job. And that was, I had prayed to God and I was like, look, I know that, you know, you bless me with this job in the first place. I know you allow me to be here, this, that, and the third, but right now this job is more of a hindrance and a help. And, you know, God moved me. He got me another job and i absolutely love my job it's in my career field i've always wanted to do mental health all those things i'm in school right now for mental health thank god i'm back in school but i'm in school right now for mental health so this is where my career field is but now i'm in a position where i'm like okay you move me from this job but i'm not making any money i'm like literally my checks are like so small it's like i'm like i can't what bills am i going to be able to pay with this and this made me question like did you really move me, God, or did I move myself? And that's when I started to question, like, me, what I was doing. Did I really pray? Did I really seek God? Did I really allow God to do this? And now, even though I'm not, I wasn't making the money that I was supposed to be, me moving from that job allowed me so much free time to get back into the word of God, to get uh -huh. back into praying to be able to have that time where I'm not waking up at four o'clock in the morning to get to a job. I can wake up and make my schedule the way that I want to. So if I do want to wake up at eight o'clock in the morning, I have that time to pray and not have to be at my appointment till 11. You know what I mean? So I, in, in that aspect, it definitely has been a blessing because it allowed me not to be so dedicated to a job. It allowed me not to be so dedicated to finances, to money. And that's the reason why my, my finances have been messing up because I'm so focused. I was so focused on the checks. I was making money. I was paying my bills. I was good and forgetting, you know, who God is. I was so, I was so afraid of leaving the job in the first place because I'm like, no job is going to pay me what I'm making right now. I'm thinking I'm making, <laughs> that's it. Like I'm kept at that place. And it's just like, no, why are you capping yourself there? Why are you stopping yourself at, at that pay level? God has so much more for you. You can go somewhere else and make way, way more, which I'm making more now than I was making before. So what I, I felt like I was being run by money at that point. And I think that's why God has been messing with my finances now to show me like I can't be solely focused on finances. I can't be solely focused on money. Granted, it helps. God pay bills, all that stuff. And don't get me wrong. I stress about money every other day. But at the end of the day, God is still teaching me, like, I'm not dependent on the check that's coming in. I'm dependent on God to keep me. Every moment that I feel like, um, um, every moment that I feel like I'm, I'm stressing out or whatever, God shows me, I still got you regardless. Even in the small things, God is still keeping me. God is still, you know, keeping a roof over my head keeping the lights on, keeping my phone paid. Like he's still there keeping me and holding me regardless of the fact that I'm not making what I was making before. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. This job is still a blessing for me. I, I'm still able to have the time to spend time with God, reading the word, praying to him, developing my relationship with him, even having time to do this, to dedicate time to this podcast. Like this job has allowed me so much more free space that I'm still working. I'm still making money, but I still have time to do these things. So that's good. That's my first, little answer. 
first of all, can we give a shout out to Pastor Jonathan Francois because he, what you said, mm-hmm. kind of took me to took me to a place where it made me thought about my come to Jesus moment. He was a mm-hmm. part of my come to Jesus moment because of some mm-hmm. stuff that he said. So I just want to give a shout out. Y- y'all find out about my come to Jesus moment for the East yeah, episode. Exactly. But yeah. shout out to Pastor Francois because that man, he didn't know me from a can of paint. And he spoke yeah. some things in my life that don't nobody know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it really shocked me because I'm like, bro, you don't know me. So how is you speaking exactly what I'm going through at this at yeah. this moment? So yeah, but yeah. But anyway, y'all. Well, for all you listeners out here, find you people that are truly touched by God. Yes. Hey. They will speak some things over you. They will speak some things into you. They will speak Honestly. some things through you. Honestly. That will change your life. And you may not understand it in the moment they speak it, but you're going to understand it. Trust me. Yes, because he spoke that word. I don't even know how long ago, but he spoke that word. I want to say it was almost a year ago that he and he it was like back to back prayers. Like and I never it didn't connect until this exact moment because I even forgot that he said that. But now that you had asked me that question and talked about it, it helped me to connect those pieces. But he spoke that a while ago. So the fact that I was even able to remember that, like. Anyway, <laughs> again, shout out to Pastor Francois. You be know what you're talking about. Them prophetic words. Right. Be real. All right, all right, y'all. That is it for this episode. We will see you next time at the Christian Call Center where Jesus is on the main line and we're online too. Make Good sure night, you y'all. hit all our links. Check us out. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Music. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on Samsung Free. We are on YouTube. We are on Facebook. There ain't no excuse. If you ain't yes, listening, you don't want to listen. So want to listen. Get in tune. Good night, y'all. Peace. <laughs>